body has become the, the end, the pleasure of the body, the comfort of the body, the convenience of the body. The body has become the end, and the mind has become the slave now. The mind has become the means. In the kingdom of heaven, minds don't work, you know, to give the body a life, because there is no body <laughs> to have a life. Everything is reversed here. So you might say that the mind has been made into the slave, that it's private and separate, that it has its own private thoughts, that it has to work for, it has to work it out. So the mind is made to do meaningless things, and given meaningless thoughts as a slave to the body. And Jesus says, no, no, it, it's the other way around. Use your body as a means to expand your perception. Use your body as a communication device where you learn, you come back to this experience of, of true communication, of teaching what you would learn, of extending love, of extending miracles. Use the body for that. If you're going to use a body, why not let it be used to be a miracle worker? Not to be a construction worker, or a this or a that. You know, it's, we don't try to mix metaphors and mix the metaphysics of the Course with thinking that you can become a more competent person, a better person, a better parent, a better worker, a better citizen. This is about really being convinced that you aren't any of the roles, and never have been. You are a transcendent being. And the way that you make that transformation is trusting in the Spirit and saying, use me. That's what happened to me right after I worked with the Course in the early years. I finally came into that surrender moment where I said, I give it all to you. Take my body, take my resources, take my time, take my future. Whatever ambitions I had for life in this world, take my ambitions, take it all. And, and use it for the glory of God. Use it for the healing for everyone in, in the universe, you know. I'm not interested in anything. I just got interviewed yesterday in uh, Copenhagen, or was it, uh, Aarhus, and in the afternoon, and at the very end of the interview, the interviewer said, don't you ever, like, miss a private life? Like, just, just like a life of your own? And, and I said, I don't experience anything as private anymore. It just feels like everything I think and say and do, I'm doing it for the whole universe. And I feel so fulfilled in that. It's like, every, let every thought, let every word that comes from this mouth be a blessing to the whole universe. That's, that's my fulfillment. That's my contentment. No, I don't just sit there imagining fantasy things, you know, like that, uh, Somebody made a, a movie about Jesus called The Last Temptation of Christ, where they had Jesus on the cross. Um, here he is, strung up on the cross, and he starts second-guessing and doubting his mission, thinking, looking down at Mary Magdala and imagining that he and Mary Magdala, you know, had a family and kids and all this and this, you know, it's like such a movie, you know. To, to even take the figure of Jesus Christ, the most transcendent character, dream symbol that you can find. Of, I am not, you know, my kingdom is not of this world. Before Abraham was, I am. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then to put some kind of ego fantasy on, like at the cross, like, oh man. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I could have had a beautiful family of beautiful children. She's a beautiful woman. Very attractive. It's like, that's, that's a Monty Python scene. That's a Monty Python scene. That's absolutely ridiculous. Always look at so, the right side. Always look at the right side of life. So, the thing about it is that what I've discovered is when I go full into function, like, I said, use me. Anything you want, I'm yours. Da, da, da. Then the Bible says, "For those whom whom uh, much uh, is given, much will be asked." Oh yeah, that's what the last 25 years have been. Saying. Take it all, okay? Oh, and then boom, I've just been used 32 countries and speaking. This is a shy guy. This was a shy guy. 
That's what happened. This was the most quiet in the senior class shy guy. This is the guy with no friends. This is the loner. This is the wallflower. Moses stuttered and he had to deliver the Ten Commandments. Gandhi was shy. Look what happened to that body. You know, when Gandhi said, use me, then that's, we saw what happened with Gandhi. That's what's going to happen to your life. Yeah. If, you, if you say yes, you're not going to be wondering, how can I get a miracle in my family, or in my job, or in my, my community? You may even be in your course group. Maybe you stay with the course group for five years, and then all of a sudden, this is my beloved one, whom I well pleased. It's time for you to transcend this course group. It's time for you to fly. It's, you are not limited to this course group. It could be anything. You're, you don't know what you're going to be asked to do. None of us do. But that's the joy of it. I find, don't put any limits on the prayer. Don't think you know where it's going. Know that you are entitled to miracles. You are headed for joy. Headed for peace and joy and love and happiness. But how you get there, I don't know. Listen and follow is the only thing that worked for me. I, I like, I will be obedient, you know.